Hello and welcome to the Lake Clear Lodge in the Adirondack Mountains of New York State in our Old World Eatery Kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful fish rosti. It's made with shredded potatoes, onions and spices. Very simple and easy to do. So I'm going to go right into the video. I also have a blog post and recipe posted. If that for some reason isn't connected with this video, just give us a call or email us at info at lodgeonlakeclear.com. If you need any more information, just take a look at our website, lodgeonlakeclear.com, and you can email from there as well. So this is a very simple dish, and we'll just run right through the process of doing it. If you'd like to cook along with me, just take a look at the ingredients, um, get those together, and, and you can cook along. Okay, so first are our potatoes. I've already peeled uh, a couple of potatoes. Basically, per order, it's a potato and a half, just to make sure you get the potato ripe, uh, wrapped right around the fish. So I'm going to shred that right up here. So the hand shredder. And I've got a pan going here with some, um, with some real butter in there. Now I want you to use real butter. If you don't want to use dairy, then you can go ahead and use some coconut oil. Um, but no oil, because generally you probably won't get a very good oil to cook with uh, in regular grocery stores. And uh, butter is just good. So. Okay, so I have some potato in there, and, a, and a, put your egg right in because the potato will brown if you keep it sitting out. So we have some great uh, organic eggs here. So I'm going to place my egg right in. And mix that right up right away because you can see that beautiful, beautiful color of the egg right there. That tells you it's a great organic egg. Now you want to mix the egg right in right away um, because your potato will brown. Then you can add the spices. So we've got our, our uh, egg in there. Now a little bit of onion. I typically use Spanish onion because which <laughs> I've got one growing, so I want to show you that. I'll probably go plant that. I didn't have the heart to cut it. But I usually use Spanish onion because it's got a milder flavor. You want a little bit of onion in there, but you don't want it really strong. This one happens to be um, an organic red uh, onion, but it's, there's not much red in it, so um, it's not going to um, make some funny colors in my, in my batter. So I'll put just a little bit of onion in here, give it some flavor. Okay. So now you've got a little bit of onion. The nice part about this recipe is the turmeric that you're putting in. Turmeric is a wonderful healthy spice. Generally it's in curries and things, a little bit more difficult to use unless you're dusting on veg you know, tossed vegetables. So this is a nice dish to use turmeric with. So I use a fair amount of turmeric, probably a teaspoon or so, um, because it will make the, the rosti a beautiful golden color as well. Okay, so a little bit of salt. I have some beautiful uh, pink Himalayan salt here. So I'm going to add some salt. You could also use what it's um, organic herba mare, what's called uh, herba mare. It's a mix of salt infused with some vegetables in there. So that's kind of a neat thing as well. Just a little bit of pepper. I don't want a whole lot of pepper in there. And if you want it spicy, I've got a little bit of cayenne pepper. So it just adds a little tinge of a spice to that and then mix that up. Now one thing you don't want to forget is a little bit of flour to bind your potato. You do need that. Now I've got some tapioca flour here in case you want to do a gluten-free and don't want to use regular flour you can use tapioca flour but use some kind of flour or it won't bind as well and your potatoes will tend to uh, uh, not stick together and keep your rosti all together. So just mix that up again. Just kind of very gently. Now you want to um, kind of in your in your mind kind of divide the potato in half. I guess you, you can do it right in the bowl if you'd like. So you want half the potato down in your pan and if you have kind of the shape of the, the fish piece in your in your head then you can do that. Make it kind of the shape of the fish. You'll see why, why I'm saying that in just a second. I'm just going to put that aside and show you my fish. Now today I'm doing a wild caught pike rosti. So this is our pike fillet here. I've already taken the skin off a piece um, and I have it here. This is a little bit thick so I've cut it just a little bit so it will cook inside because generally when you have oh 
a piece of fish that's about that thickness or less. The fish will cook inside just about the time that your potato is browned on the outside on medium-high heat. So what I meant by the, the shape of the fish is, because um, it, it might be different, I have it kind of like that and I want to be sure that it sits on the potato because it's going to be wrapped inside and be covered. Okay, so it's on there. I can put my potato on and have it covered and I'm going to turn it. Um, so this is our wall cut pike. Again, you could do it with haddock, you could do it with any fresh fish that you could get. Um, so now comes the, the, uh, the herb layer. It's really a, the pike rosti. I feature the herbs and a little bit of greens inside. So now I'm going to put, I feature a little bit of pesto inside. If you don't like pesto, or if you don't want the cheese in the pesto, then just sprinkle fresh herbs in there. That would be fine too. But I accent that with a little bit of pesto, and you can actually serve that on the side if, if somebody, you know, likes pesto. And then also what I'm going to do is put a few greens on top. It just separates the potato layer. It adds a little bit of more fresh greens inside, adds some color. And I have some, these greens are a little bit of spinach, it's a little bit of kale. Um, doesn't matter what your greens are, just some thinner greens that are going to cook inside fairly fast. You don't want the really thick kale. Spinach is always nice. So now you're going to put the top layer of your potato on and encase it. And I can see this um, getting nice and golden on the bottom already, so we may flip this pretty fast. So you want just enough to potato to encase that in. Now you may need to use a little more potato than you'd like to eat, possibly, but it's a really nice presentation. Okay, so now we have the fish cooking, um, and general rule is don't fuss with it too much on the bottom until you can see the edges becoming brown, because it would probably fall apart on you if you tried to turn it over. Now I can see the edges being brown right around here to know that it's um, getting nice and crisp on the bottom. So that gives me a clue that I can probably flip it over. You can kind of check really quickly if you want to, nice and easy. And as far as your spatula, a good idea is to have the, a wide and long one if you can. It helps with the flip over, especially when you have a fish piece this big. So then just very gently flip that over. Pull all your pieces in if some fall apart, but you want that nice and golden on the side before you flip it because that's, then you know it's all held together. Now, once that's cooking, I'd, I'd uh, probably be preparing my plate a little bit. I'm just gonna move this over very gently. Again, you don't wanna fuss with it because it's gonna, it might fall apart. Now, typically, kale is used as a garnish, which is a very underutilized vegetable. Um, typically, you might see the lemon and the kale sitting on the plate like that. Well, I've um, gotten into uh, my kale lately, so, Take that beautiful kale, I've got some wonderful organic local kale there, and um, chop it up. I want you to chop that up, don't just put it on the plate with your lemon and then throw it out. I want you to chop it up and saute it a little bit in your pan. I love putting a little bit of sesame oil on that. You can just kind of toss it in the butter if you'd like, put a little bit more salt on it if you'd like. But don't just put it on your plate as a garnish and throw it out. Use that kale, it's got some great nutrition in it. Now if you feel you want to or need to, you can add a little bit more butter to the pan as you go along. So it's nice and crisp, it looks like it's about ready to come out. Um, and like I said, if you do it on about medium to medium high heat, then your fish should be done in there at the same time. So. There we have our rosti. Now I have my kale in there, and I have some sesame oil, and then I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of sesame seed. And just toss that around. Now ahead of time, I grated some carrots, um, so I'm gonna toss them in at the end. I only want them warm. The best thing to do is just toss them and not cook them too much. One, they'll be nice and crunchy. They'll keep all that great nutritional value in there, especially if you have an organic carrot. So there you have your uh, wild-caught fish rosti at the Old World Eatery at Lake Clear Lodge.